Hebrews chapter number 11. Now I'm going to begin reading verse number 1, read down through verse number 6. The Bible said, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good report. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that the things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. By faith Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts. And by it he being dead yet speaketh. By faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him for before his translation he had this testimony that he pleased God. But without faith it is impossible to please him for he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Brother Doug you pray with us if you don't mind. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Lord, give liberty. God, unction, God. Oh, my. Boy, it's been a blessing. Well, help us, Lord. Amen. Do, do, Lord. Oh, my. Yeah. Oh, dear God. Yeah. Oh, my. Amen. Oh, my. Lord, there's nothing sung about the end of Yeah. I pray they come to the saving knowledge of Amen. God, maybe the choice is saved of God. Oh, dear God. Just even another log on the fire. Yeah. God, I pray you just uh, revive their hearts. Amen. Some supernatural. Yeah. Something eternal. God, do something. Yeah. Today. Yes. We'll bow these sideways. Oh, my. To the glory of God. Yes. Yeah. Oh, my. In Jesus name. Amen. 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 Thank you, preacher. I want you to look at verse number 5, if you would, the latter part of verse number 5. The Bible said, for, for, for before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. Now, I want to preach to you this morning with this thought in mind on the importance of a good testimony Amen. or having the right kind of testimony. Now, I want to say this. I thank God for you, preacher. Thank God for his testimony. Miss Manette, thank God for that good testimony that she gives. I'm going to tell you, beloved, thank God for somebody that's uh, been in the race for 30 years, amen, been in the ministry, has not got sidetracked, not got messed up, amen, that he set his sight toward God, living for God, looking to God, and God certainly blessed him. Now, I'm going to say this. Your testimony really is the history of your life. That's what it is. Your testimony is the history of your life. I don't know about you, but I'll be honest with you. I don't like to be around negative people. <laughs> amen or not? I don't like to be around people, amen, that all the time in the doldrums and all the time, you know, seeing uh, the glass half empty, amen. Hey, you're around people and they think, you know, they're the only ones having problems. Hey, we've all got problems. Job 14, 1, man, this born of a woman is a few days and full of trouble. Hey, we've all got issues, amen. But I want to say this to you, friend. Uh, we need to look, thank God for the good things in life. We've been blessed. We've all been blessed. If we got what we deserve, we'd be in hell with our backbone broke, amen. Hey, I'm blessed just by being up here this morning, spending time with my family, getting to see my friends and my best friend in the ministry, hearing the good music, being around where God's at. I tell you, I love it, amen, being positive. Boy, there's a lot of people in life that, friend, they have a negative attitude, amen. 
I'll tell you, I don't like to be around somebody that's all the time tearing people down. Hey, Amen. Seeing things wrong in the church. Hey, I know there's a lot of things wrong. But I want to say this. There's a lot of things right with the church. Amen. I want to say this. Friend, testimonies, there's some kind of testimonies that you do not want. Amen. Thought about over in the book of Acts, chapter 13, there's a fella by the name of John Mark. And I'll tell you, he caused some dissension, amen, between two men of God uh, because he turned back and wouldn't go with them on the trip. He caused some dissension, amen. Hey, I don't want to have seen any of that kind of testimony. I don't want to have a testimony, amen, that I quit on God. I don't want to have a testimony, Brother Bob, that I turned my back on the Lord, amen. That's exactly right. Then I'll say this. In 3 John, there was a fellow over there by the name of Diotrephes. I want to say this. He was a promoter, but he was a promoter of himself. Amen. <laughs> Have you ever seen somebody, amen, Brother Thad, that they love their self more than they love God? Somebody say amen. Scripture tells us in Romans 12, we're not to think of ourselves more highly than we ought, but to think soberly and righteously, amen. Hey, I realize I'm nothing, amen. Amen or not. I've seen some people, beloved, amen, that they were just so in love with their self that you couldn't even get close to them. Amen or not. I want to say to you, friend, we're nothing without God. John 15, 5, Jesus said this, he said, without me, ye can do nothing. Amen. We don't need to be self-reliant. We need to be Savior-reliant. We need to be totally dependent upon him. Amen or not. Well, Diotrephes, he loved to have the preeminence. Amen. <laughs> have you ever seen people like that? Amen. Brother Rod, that they want to be seen. Thank God for what Miss Annette said. Hey, she'd rather be in the kitchen serving. She'd rather be in there where nobody can't see her, amen. Hey, trying to be a blessing, Brother Mike. Hey, the people, I can tell you this morning, friend, hey, if the job gets done, it ain't going to be because of you. It ain't going to be because of me. If the job gets done, it's going to be because of him, amen. Amen or not? I don't say to you, friend, oh, Diotrephes, he loved to be out in front of the crowd, amen. Brother Clint, he liked to get them pats on the back. He loved to get his hand shook. He loved to get his light name up in lights. Amen, chief. So everybody could say, boy, look at him, amen. Yeah. Amen or not? Yeah. I'll tell you, it's sad to say, a friend, in the Christian service, I've seen down through the years, Brother Lawrence, I've seen a lot of preachers like that. Yeah. Yeah. I promise you, friend, I'm a zero with a rim knocked off of it. Yeah. Yeah. Amen or not? I mean, listen, friend, we couldn't even get out of bed if it wasn't for the grace of God. We couldn't even get up and take a shower, amen, provide for our families, amen, and be a blessing to people if it wasn't for the good grace of God. I've seen people, amen, preachers get up, boy, they, friend, think they can wow a crowd, amen. I mean, get people excited. Somebody say amen. Hey, I'm not interested in people hearing me preach. Brother Thad, I'm not interested in people seeing me. I told Brother Doug, I said, if the wind gets a blowing while the singing is going on, I don't have to get on the platform. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Amen or not? Thank God, friend, hey, for something real. Thank God for people that's willing to take a back seat. Amen. Leaders should lead by example. Don't tell me what to do. Show me what to do. <laughs> Amen or not? Hey, friend, I've seen people, had a man on the job one time, and he was the boss man, and uh, he let, we had to take 10-minute breaks. He'd take 30-minute breaks. So he come out, Brother Doug, one time, uh, Brother Rocky, and he came out, came over to my station. I called his name. I said, look, we take 10-minute breaks. You get 30-minute breaks. He said, listen, you don't do what I do. You do what I say do. <laughs> Amen. I want to say to you, Thank God for a good servant and a good preacher, amen, that don't only preach you the truth, not only does he preach you the truth, but thank God he lives the truth in front of you. Amen? 
Thank God for a man of God and his wife and his family that you can approach, that you can talk to, that you don't have to feel, amen, like you're down here, amen, when you come in their presence. Hey, you can be around them and feel comfortable in their presence, amen. Thank God for that kind of testimony, amen. Now, I want to say this, amen, in Revelation 2, verses 1 through 5, that church at Ephesus had a testimony, you know what? They had a testimony that they left their first love. Amen. Boy, they'd have a testimony like that. Me and my wife's been married, just celebrated 34 years, Brother Sidney. And I told her, Chief, I said, I love you more now than I did when I married you. Sometimes, Brother Bob, when we're young and we marry, sometimes we don't marry for the right reasons. Somebody say amen now. <laughs> I'll tell you, thank God for a good wife that'll go there with you through thick and thin. Thank God she'll love you and support you and pray for you. Lift your hands up. Be there in the dark times. Be there when you're crying. Can't even help yourself. Thank God for somebody that's willing to love you unconditionally. Amen. Well, I want to say this to you, friend. There's many Christians like this church at Ephesus today that there's a lot of things that are right with them, but I'm going to tell you what, the most important thing's wrong with them, they have left their first love. You know how you can tell that? Because their heart's not on fire for God. And I know your preacher's just like any other preacher, amen. I'm going to tell you, when you're a pastor of church, you'll hear one excuse after another. Y'all help me, I don't want to kill a service here, Amen. <laughs> I mean, people, they'll call in on Sunday. Hey, they got the word now, and Doug, they know I don't text, and you know I don't text, amen. And I'll tell you, my people, instead of calling, what they'll do, they'll send me text messages so they don't have to talk to the preacher. <laughs> Some of y'all laughing, amen. You ain't guilty of it, amen. <laughs> preacher, I don't feel good this morning. I'm sick. How many times do you think the man of God goes to the pulpit and he don't feel good? How many times do you think, beloved, that he goes in the pulpit, might have been sick all night long, night before, Brother Lawrence, but he gets in the pulpit, amen, because he's faithful to God. He's got a calling on his life, and he preaches the word of God faithfully, week in and week out, amen. Amen or not? Boy, I don't want to leave my first love. Boy, I don't want to remember, I don't want to forget where I come from. Amen. God saved me December the 15th, Brother Ray, 1982, about 15 minutes after 7 on 113 Pumpkin Town Highway. Hey, God saved me. Hey, Josh, I don't ever want to forget what God done in my heart. Why don't we leave my first love? What would be a bad testimony? How many of you thinking about people right now that you know, amen, that's walked away from God? I know preachers. I can tell you preacher after preacher that has quit the ministry, that's left the ministry, amen. Friend, they can make it bigger, Sydney, somewhere else. Hey, you know what happened? They left their first love. Did you hear what your preacher said a while ago in his testimony opening up? Amen, he said this. When he took the church, couldn't pay him, was it 150 a week or something like that? Hey, left a good paying job. You know why he done that? Because he loved God. Amen or not? I want to tell you, listen, I believe you ought to pay a man of God. The Bible said a man of God's worthy of double honor. But I want to say this, friend, there are a lot of hirelings that are for hire. There's a lot of preachers in the pulpit today. Brother Ray, I guarantee you, Rocky, if you cut their salary, they'd quit the ministry. Y'all help me, amen. Amen, help me right here. I mean, thank God, amen. I want to tell you, I'm saying this. We shouldn't serve for a paycheck. Amen. We should serve because God has saved us and he's called us. And thank God we love people. We give of ourselves and we're willing to go the extra mile. Thank God to keep people out of hell. Left out of here last night. And Brother Doug and two or three men were coming in with a young lady, Brother Rocky. Hey, after everybody had left, 
We would think maybe the meeting's over with. Hey, God's done going home. But I'll tell you, a young lady gave her heart to Jesus last night. Thank God after the service. I don't say this. That's more important than me preaching and you singing and shouting amen. Somebody got birthed in the family of God. Amen. Thank God for a testimony of loving the things of God. Amen. I want to say to you, friend, the church at Laodicea, Revelation chapter 3, I want to say this, they had a testimony that they made God sick. Amen or not? So preacher, what do you mean by that? That church was lukewarm. I don't know about you, I went down for breakfast this morning, thanked the church for the room and the breakfast. And Brother Doug, we went down there, and this man brought a pot of coffee out, and you know what it was? It was lukewarm. <laughs> I don't tell you, don't give me no lukewarm coffee. I told him, I said, go freshen this up a little bit. I said, I want it a little hotter, amen. <laughs> Son, at home, when I get coffee out in the morning, I pour it out of the uh, pitcher, amen. Chief, I'll put it in the microwave. Thank God I'll nuke it for about 30 minutes, amen. Hey, when I drink my coffee, it's going to be hot. <laughs> Somebody say amen. I like hot coffee, amen. <laughs> Don't give me a warm glass of milk. Somebody say amen. Son, I drank milk every day of my life. Thank God for milk and Ritz crackers and peanut butter. Somebody say amen. amen. Before I go to bed every night, chief, amen, I'll get them Ritz crackers, put that peanut butter, amen, on them. I'll get me a good cold glass of milk, put some ice cubes in it. Son, it just seems like it helps me to sleep. Somebody say amen. amen. I want to say this to you, friend. There's a lot of Christians, Brother Rocky, that they've got lukewarm. Amen. I don't tell you what I'm fighting this day and time, and I'm sure every preacher's fighting this, amen, is trying to get people to come back on Sunday night. Y'all help me out here. Don't die on me, amen. We got people, amen, there. They've come on Sunday morning, and boy, you think, you know, they're getting ready to sprout angel wings, fly off right on the end of heaven, amen. <laughs> I try not to get discouraged. I don't, Brother Doug, I don't want to be negative. Right, Brother Mike, I, I say, well, Brother Rocky, I give them enough on Sunday morning. I'm such a good preacher, they don't have to come back on Sunday night and Wednesday night, amen. amen. <laughs> try to be positive, amen. <laughs> Let the outlook be the uplook. Somebody say amen. <laughs> I want to say to you, friend, I don't want to be a lukewarm Christian. I don't want to be somebody, amen, that's hot one minute and cold the next. I don't want to be somebody that's up one minute, brother Ray, and down the next. I don't want to be somebody, amen, that you're afraid to walk up and speak to that they're going to snap your head off. Y'all help me, amen. So I need some people in the church, amen. Hey, you don't know whether to speak to them or not. You don't know what side of the bed they got upon, amen. You ever been around somebody like that? I mean, I'm just what I am, friend, amen. I mean, like it, lump it, bump it, or jump it. Somebody say amen. <laughs> I like to have a good time. I like to laugh, cut up, amen, have a good time. They, some people, amen, hey, you can walk up to them, well, you hurt my feelings, amen. You better be glad you ain't a preacher, amen, or not. <laughs> One man said, if you carry a chip on your shoulder, you probably don't have nothing but wood from the neck up. Somebody say amen. I'll tell you, it's a bad testimony. Miss Eloise, amen, you're always sweet. Amen. But I'll tell you, there's people, friend, that have left their first love. They're lukewarm. Amen or not? One minute they're on fire for God, Josh, and the next minute you couldn't get them to hand out a gospel tract. You know what we need in this, in this day and hour? We need some consistency. We need people, thank God, that's going to set their face, amen, like Jesus did as a flint toward Calvary. We need to set our eyes upon him. Don't let this world let us fall out of love with Jesus. Get us lukewarm, amen. Hey, serve God regardless of the outcome.
let me ask you this this morning. Now I'm about through. Let me say this. You reckon Brother Doug's ever got discouraged? You reckon ever, you reckon he's ever got down, amen, and got discouraged about situations in the church? But you know what he does? Sunday after Sunday, Wednesday after Wednesday, thank God he comes in. He's always got an encouraging word. Boy, I like that song, Clint, son. That was a good song, amen. I like that. I'm glad he's not Joel Osteen, amen or not. He got his picture taken with him. It's in there in his study, amen or not. Thad might have had something to do with that, amen. I'm going to tell you what, thank God for a man that will get up and tell you the truth. I don't come to church, amen, to try to be patted on the back. I don't come to church, amen, to have a good feeling. We had a lady visiting our church one time, Brother Doug. She come in the church, and you could tell she was a well-to-do type lady, you know. Brother Mike, she come in. I thought, well, you're, you're already out of place anyway, amen. She come in the church and said, Preacher, said, I heard about your church and said, We want to visit your church. She said, I like to go to them churches where you just get a good, warm, fuzzy feeling. <laughs> Son, done, God doesn't give me a good message on sin, amen. <laughs> that morning's on Sunday morning. And I, 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 I should have told her so she'd left then, amen. <laughs> she didn't get no warm, fuzzy feeling that morning, friend, amen or not. I mean, I was preaching against sin, son. I was nailing it down, preaching against sin. She got up and walked out, amen, for the invitation. Somebody say amen. amen. Yeah. Yeah. I want to say something to you, friend. God didn't call us, amen, to be lukewarm. God didn't call us to be inconsistent. God didn't call us, amen, to uh, be like a yo-yo up and down. Amen. God called us to walk the Christian life. It's not a 50-yard dash. It's a marathon. You know what the Christian life is? It's a life lived. Yeah, good, good. Amen. It's a life lived. I want to say this. Enoch had a testimony that he pleased God. Let me ask you this this morning. What's your testimony? Amen. And boy, we hide things, amen. We hide things and... We come into church, it's easy to put a suit and a tie on, ladies wear a dress. It's easy to come to church, amen. But I want to tell you what, the Bible said man looks on the outward appearance, but God looks on the heart. One man said this, and I like this. What about this morning, amen, we're sitting here in the house of God on a pew. What if they could put a projector, put a screen up, and put a projector of everything that's going through your mind right now, would you want it to be seen? Miss Mary's up here laughing, amen. <laughs> I mean, things that's going through your mind right now, would you want that to be seen for everybody to see in the church? I'm going to tell you, God's looking at it. God knows. You can't hide. Where are you going to hide from Him? God knows, friend. If you're sitting there this morning, maybe you're sideways. You might even be sideways with the preacher. Might even be sideways with his family, amen. I don't tell you, God knows that. We had a lady last Sunday come up on the pulpit, Brother Doug, right there in the service. And son, she come up and apologized to me and my wife, holding some bitter feelings against me and my wife. I mean, over childish stuff. Thank God she got, she repented of it. Amen. She had enough God about her, amen, and enough gumption that she came up and repented of it, amen. But you'll be surprised that people sitting around the church, amen, hey, they're mad at God, they're disappointed in the way things fell out in their life, amen, hey, they've got a bad testimony, they don't have a testimony like Enoch that he pleased God, but they're sitting there bitter on God, amen. Amen. I wonder what your testimony is this morning. Do you have a testimony that pleases God? Amen. Do you love Jesus this morning more than you love anything else? Remember, I asked old Peter, he asked him three times over in John 21, Rocky. He said, do you love me? Many writers said, why did he ask him three times? It's probably because he denied him three times. He said, Peter, do you love me? He said, Lord, you know, finally, that I love you. He said, feed my sheep, amen. 
I'm going to tell you, if you love God, you won't mind serving God, friend. You don't come to church to serve God, by the way. We come to church to worship Him. <laughs> you go out of these doors, amen, in Emmanuel Baptist Church, Florence, Kentucky, you go out of these doors to serve God. We come in here to worship Him. Amen. So there ain't been some worshiping going on this morning. I mean, I like it. Matthew 18, 20, he said, where two or three are gathered together in his name, he'll be in the midst. Right. Right. Brother Doug, I walked in this morning. He's back there in his study. He said, boy, I felt the Holy Ghost in here this morning. Said, was in here praying. I said, hallelujah. <laughs> hey. Amen or not? Hey. Well, I don't want a testimony that I'm a lukewarm Christian. I don't want a testimony that I'm a half-hearted Christian. Right. Right. Amen. Does your testimony please God? Let me say this. Enoch was a descendant of Cain. Genesis 4, 17. We know what happened with Cain. First murder in the Bible, Cain killed his brother. Amen. Say, what are you trying to say, preacher? Don't allow your past to destroy your future. Somebody said, I've made mistakes. Who in here hadn't? The only person not hadn't made mistakes is uh, the person that's not doing anything. Yeah. Sure. Amen. I'm glad God will forgive us. Yeah. I'm glad if we repent, He'll forgive us. Amen. Hey, don't live in your past mistakes. Right. Don't live in past sins. Don't have a testimony, friend, that you're living in the past. Amen. Right. Boy, ain't it please God? When it comes down to the end of my life, I told my wife, we watched her mother go out, son, take her last breath, and Brother Doug, I'm telling you unto God, it looked like she just went to sleep. Christians just die better. You know that? <laughs> this lady down there at that hospice house, she told us, wife went down there and stayed almost nine days, and Brother Mike down at the hospice house, and that lady, nurse come in, she told us about a man who was down there not too long ago. She said before he started dying, evidently he wasn't a Christian. He said, kept saying, my feet's getting hot. I'm telling you, the nurse told us that, friend. Said, my feet's getting hot. I'm going to tell you, hell's real. Hell's real and heaven's real. Psalms 116, verse number 15, the Bible said, Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. Son Joyce's mother, she just kept there. Her breath got shorter. It got in her stomach. It got up in her diaphragm. It got right up here, amen. Now I'll tell you what she did. She just leaned back and took the last breath and went to sleep. Christians just die better. I told my wife, we was coming back up the road, and she was broken hearted. Son, I told my wife, I said, I hope I can die like that. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I want to die with a testimony that's pleasing to God. Yeah. Amen. I don't want to go out of here kicking and screaming and having regrets. I want to go out of here having a testimony like Enoch. Thank God he walked with God and he pleased God. Amen. Yeah.